Hi, I'm Bob. From today, I would like to introduce econometric analysis and its applications in research. Econometric models and estimation methods play an important role in economic studies. What is econometrics? According to the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Econometrics is based upon the development of statistical methods for estimating economic relationships, testing economic theories, and evaluating and implementing government and business policy. In Professor William Green's well-known textbook, Econometric Analysis, Econometrics is the field of economics that concerns itself with the application of mathematical statistics and the tools of statistical inference to the empirical measurement of relationships postulated by economic theory. And the introduction to econometrics by Professor Stock and Watson states that econometrics is the science and art of using economic theory and statistical techniques to analyze economic data. We find regression models, specification strategies, and estimation methods in econometric analysis. On the one hand, mathematics, probability, and statistics are the foundation of econometrics. On the other hand, econometrics has developed its unique approaches and methods over the past decades. It's a separate discipline from math. It has become the most essential and useful subject in economics. It is widely used in many branches in economics, including microeconomics, macroeconomics, labor economics, industrial organization, financial economics, and public economics. The econometrics that focuses on micro-level data is called microeconometrics. In the textbook, microeconometrics, methods and applications, professors Cameron and Chiwadi, microeconometric analysis is the analysis of the individual level data on the economic behavior of firms and individuals. The goal of econometric analysis is to estimate relationships between economic variables. For example, we might want to know whether the minimum wage law increases the workers' unemployment rates. The minimum wage law implementation and the unemployment rates are the two variables we want to find relationship. Or we might want to figure out whether the saying like father, like son is true or not in terms of labor income or earnings capability. We could check whether the adult children's earnings are positively related to their parents. Econometric models and methods can test economic theories and hypotheses. The law of demand states that as the goods price decreases, the demand for that good increases. We can test this theory using econometric models. For instance, we can collect ice cream cones prices and sales and use econometric models to see whether a lower ice cream price leads to higher consumption of ice cream. The third goal econometrics tries to achieve is to forecast economic variables. How much will the US GDP grow next year? What will be the CPI next month? Economists rely on econometric models to make forecasts. 
Econometric analysis is often employed to evaluate public policies and educational programs. For example, we would like to examine the effects of drug training on worker productivity. Does training significantly improve workers' productivity? Another example is to evaluate the proposal of reducing class size at elementary schools. How much can the reduction of class size improve the students' basic learning? Is the beneficial effect of smaller classes on learning large or small? Is the size of classes the cause of the students' academic performance? All these questions require econometric models and estimation methods to answer. In some cases, especially those involve economic theories, a formal economic model is first constructed. We use utility or profit maximization in microeconomics to describe consumer or firm's behavior. We often build a theoretical model and find out the direction of the change of a variable with another variable. Then we formulate a hypothesis. The second step is to construct and fit an econometric model. We can see whether the empirical evidence is consistent with the hypothesis. But sometimes we don't have a formal economic model. We might have an idea based on our common sense or everyday experience. We can develop an econometric model to find whether this idea is correct. The econometric model involves a lot of data. In econometrics, we usually collect long experimental data. Long experimental data is also called observational data or retrospective data. By contrast, experimental data are often collected in laboratory environments in natural science but they are much more difficult to obtain in the social science. For example, I often use survey data, such as the data from current population survey, CPS, and the panel studies of income dynamics, PSID. They are examples of long experimental data. We could not control the environmental variables like in a scientific experiment. That makes it difficult to estimate the causal relationship between variables. So we employ various specification strategies and estimation methods to tackle this identification challenge. There are four major data types. The first one is the cross-sectional data. A cross-sectional data set consists of a sample of individuals, households, firms, cities, states, countries or other units taken at a given point in time. For example, this survey data on residents' age, gender, race, educational attainment and annual labor income in 2010 are cross-sectional data. We can see the data for 3,061,692 individuals for a single period, 2010. It is a 1% national random sample of the population from the American Community Survey, ACS. The data set contained each individual's demographic characteristics and economic information in 2010. We can see the age of each individual. The variable sex reports whether the person is a male or female, the person's race, marital status, educational attainment, employment status, annual labor income and other information are also collected. 
In this cross-sectional data set, we have 3,061,692 observations for a single time period. By the way, I use Stata as my data analysis tool. Please refer to my Introductory Stata 2022 course for details on using the software. The second data type is the time series. Time series data are data for a single individual collected at multiple time periods. It contains observations on variables over time. Here is a time series data set. It contains observations on two variables for 20 time periods from 2000 to 2019. The data in each row correspond to a different year. There were 20 years of data on average family income and CPI for only one individual country, the United States. The cross-sectional data contains variables for many individuals but one time period, while the time series data contains variables for one individual but many time periods. The third and fourth data types are the pooled cross-sections and the panel data. Both of them have variables for many individuals and many time periods. The difference between them is that in panel data, each individual is observed many times. But in pooled cross-sections, the individuals observed in different years may not be the same. That is to say, in panel data, also called longitudinal data, consists of repeated observations of the same individual over time. For example, in the PSID survey data, there were 77,166 observations. Each person has their ID. The same individual reported her information every two years from 2015 to 2019. We see each person's gender, age, employment status, the years of schooling, three times. By contrast, the pooled cross-sections consist of multiple years of data from different individuals. Here are the pooled cross-sections. People with ID 1 to 100 participated in the 2015 survey. Another group of people took part in the 2017 survey. The individual surveyed in 2015 only appeared once and did not participate in the 2017 survey. The above are the four main types of economic data. We will encounter all of them in this course. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.